Hello and welcome to the 13th uh, part of this uh, PDO uh, uh, video tutorial series um, regarding PDO um, and MySQL for PHP. So in this tutorial we're going to um, do something a little bit more interesting this time is we're going to disable uh, the auto commit uh, mode in the MySQL um, server whilst we're doing um, a transaction, whilst we're doing a query. Okay. Now the question you may be asking is what is this? Okay, so let's just run through this. We have a, our connection as standard, okay, and then we're going to make a PDO statement. All right. Now, um, in some other tutorials, I haven't um, been totally clear about this. I've said PDO statement, but it's another um, object which has been returned, and this is something which you really need to understand um, prior to knowing where the transaction begins and what it is that you're doing. So. Essentially, we have our PDO object here, and when we do our prepare state uh, prepare call, it's going to return a PDO statement. Okay, so we're going to say then uh, PDO and prepare, and we're going to say um, select everything from uh, users. <coughs> now, this really doesn't matter because we're just extracting data. Um, from the database, therefore there's no um, writing, there's no editing, there's no changing and so on. Now, which is fine, therefore we don't really need transactions for this. But if we are doing stuff like deleting entries, updating entries, modifying entries and so on, um, then if at one point during your code you think, oh wait a minute, there's an error there, I need to roll back everything um, so it goes back to the way it was then that's where transactions come into uh, full effect. So using a select statement really just doesn't doesn't cut it. All right? But if we use an up update statement instead, um, which is then going to write changes to the database. So update users um, sets uh, name equals to, um, we use a question mark, where user ID equals question mark. Okay. Now we know that we're going to use our um, bind parameter in this case, and we're just going to say parameter number one, and we're going to say that's name, and then uh, bind parameter number two is then going to be equal to user ID. Now because this is by reference, we can then declare or we can initialize um, the variables a little bit later, and we can put David Thorne, and I think it was still uh, Thorne, it was David James Thorne, sorry. I'll move this over across in a second. Okay, and then user ID was one. All right. So w in this one, we're going to change it. Um, we're going to get rid of the James. Okay. Um, so we, we want to take that out. Okay. Set name equal to that where user ID equals one. All right. So this is what we're changing at the moment. It's David James. And let's just bring this across. Okay, and as you can see at the moment, it's David James Thorne in here, rather than um, uh, David Thorne, which is what we want to change it to. So, um, we've got our PDO statement, we've uh, done our prepare statement, we've binded our results, we've initialized um, our parameters, should we say, sorry, not the results, the, the parameters, and now what we need to do is then um, execute it as normal. And we can just turn around and say if uh, execute to check to see whether at the execution was all okay. Echo all okay. All right. So fantastic. Come to here. We'll reload this. All okay. We can refresh our database, and as you can see now, we got David Thorne. But what about if whilst doing this? Um, let's just change this back to David James Thor instead. We can then go, oh no, there was an uh, error. Okay, obviously we wouldn't like that, but after we've now executed, we go, oh no, there's an error. We've got to roll back everything possible, and we've got to rewrite all this code, and there's now been stuff deleted and all sorts of stuff. You know, and we've lost all this data. Uh, what are we going to do? Well, we want a way to be able to roll back what's happened. Now, at the moment, because the MySQL server is on auto-commit, it means that it will make these changes um, straight away as you fire 
as you execute them. Now, to tell the MySQL server, don't commit these changes until I tell you to. Okay. Therefore, we start using transactions. Okay. So let's um, come here. Now, and they have to um, tell the, the MySQL server to go into um, not to, to not go into auto commit mode um, prior to you start doing any executions and so on. So um, the first thing which you want to do is then say PDO begin transaction. Now this time um, we're going to now change the database from David Thorne. Let's just refresh this, make sure it's all the same. David Thorne to David James Thorne. Okay. And let's just refresh this again. And it says, oh no, there was an error. Okay, all was okay. It's a bit redundant having that all was okay. Um, but this time we come to the database and it still says David Thorne. That's because we've not committed um, that transaction yet. Now, if it was all okay, um, then we could just go ahead and then say uh, PDO commit. So as long as you're happy that that execution was okay, those changes should be made to the database, then you uh, explicitly fire the commit f uh, method to, to say now this autocomplete mode can continue on um, with making the changes. So let's uh, run it again. All was okay, so the query was fine. Come here, and now you can see it's made those changes. Okay, so now it comes to the point is that um, once you have committed the changes, just to just to show you one thing first of all, then we'll explain it afterwards. If you've committed the changes and you then fire rollback, okay, so let's now put it to David Thorne instead. So commit's going to make the changes. All right, then there's another function called rollback. Now, I just want to show you explicitly here that we're firing both the commit first, then the rollback. So we're going to be updating name to David Thorne, where user ID is equal to one. We're using transactions, so let's fire it again. Okay, there is no active transaction. All right, this is because let's come back here and you see David Thorne. All right, so it, it applied the transaction, but the fact of the matter is, is because we went because we fired commit, we're now not in a transaction anymore. Okay, so um, every single time you say commit changes, if you want to do another query, you then need to say begin transaction once again all right so the pdo commit is saying go back into auto commit mode now and when you say begin transaction you're telling it to not go into auto commit it then should be a manual commit which is done by then firing the commit function now rollback is only going to be done if you then decide that there's errors to be uh, that there's errors being made therefore you wouldn't commit the changes you're destroying that transaction that you had so let's just come back to here and put David James Thorne fire this once again and all okay but this time when we refresh it you see that it's still David Thorne so the changes although they executed correctly and it was all fine somewhere in your code you went wait a minute there's been a massive error I need to just undo everything. Therefore, you would then call PDO rollback. But just remember that once you've called commit, those changes are in the database, okay, and have been written. And in order for you to call rollback, you need to have um, an open transa transaction or an active transaction. And you no point calling rollback after commit because if you do that then you've ended the transaction therefore you need to open up a new transaction okay so um, once you've called begin transaction you have one of one or two choices it's either call commit to make the changes or roll back to not make the changes now if you don't call commit effectively you're calling roll back because you're not making the changes anyway therefore um, Yes, that's that's effectively it. The commit is saying end transaction and write all changes. Um, that's effectively this um, this tutorial done. I mean, it, it's all about if between your code and the database you're going to make changes. Okay, you're going to make written hard hard changes. Now, 
the one thing to remember is that the likes of dropping tables if you read in the the begin transaction documentation um, it is here okay some databases including mysql all automatically issue an implicit commit when a database definition language statement such as drop table or create table is issued within the transaction the implicit commit will prevent you from rolling back any other changes with the transaction boundary therefore you need to be careful about uh, what you use begin transactions for you need to know that um, you can actually roll back those transactions so I would if, you, if you're just doing updates um, and deletes and so on then it would be fine okay so if we come here and um, we then uh, say deletes uh, from users where uh, user ID is more than and let's pick a number uh, more than two so we'll delete Tony Andrews more than a uh, question mark and we'll just put um, change that to user ID get rid of this one uh, put two there get rid of this one just for clarity okay so now um, in this one we're going to roll back so let's just say uh, we roll back the transaction okay so now we're, we're deleting uh, where the user ID is more than actually we want more than equal to two no we want more than two sorry I don't want to delete anything higher and uh, lower sorry okay let's go again okay we roll back the transaction come to the database refresh it and you see that Tony Andrews is still there because we made an error at one point but this time if we say commit this time he's going to be gone from the database and we refresh this we roll back the transaction we didn't but okay now you can see he's gone all right so um, it's kind of a safe way of programming especially with data and the last thing you want to do is lose data um, so uh, if you've coded correctly then you don't need it because you're also opening yourself up for errors if there are um, important changes to be made and you don't get those changes that's also it's a, a double-edged sword you know so you, you want to make certain that the changes are written and if you've not coded correctly then they won't get written and if you haven't called commit then they won't get written but then if you have called commit and you didn't want those changes to be made and you've lost the old data so um, you have to be careful what you're doing um, okay that's the tutorial done I uh, hope you've learned something I hope you can go on from here uh, knowing how to use transactions and how to commit and roll back um, and um, when you use them all right my name is David Thorne from Thorne Web Design um, subscribe if you liked it comment if you find uh, anything worthy to write down uh, like share thumbs up all the normal social networking things and look forward to the uh, next tutorials um, so this is tutorial 13 um, I think I'm nearly covering everything in the PDO if there's something that I've missed okay please let me know um, because I'm I'm trying to find things which I, I should talk about um, which are pertinent to actually um, everyone you know uh, some videos you just don't need to know um, so I, I'm trying to do the most important elements of PDO um, in the first say 20 videos okay um, that's it have a nice evening good night